In this tutorial, you will learn how to use a for loop in the code.org app lab environment. Here are two examples of a for loop. This one is in the text mode, and this is the same for loop in the block mode. Let's talk about some important facts. For loops let you repeat lines of code. This is called iteration. For loops can be useful for reducing the amount of code in a program. So if we need the same line of code 100 times, instead of writing it 100 times, we write it once and then have a for loop repeated 100 times. There are also alternative types of loops out there like while loops, and they can be good for different things. Let's take a look at this loop again. There are four main parts of the for loop. The first three are in the header up here, and then there's the body of the for loop. Let's take a look at each part and what it does. When a for loop is executing, the first step is the creation of this variable here. And this happens before the loop even begins. This variable acts as a counter. Often it's called i, but it could be called anything. And often it's set to zero. The next step is to check this condition here. So the loop will only go through a cycle as long as this condition is true. The third step is to run through the body of the loop. The body starts where this curly bracket opens and ends where the curly bracket closes. In this case, we only have one line of code in the body. but We can have as much code in here as we want as long as it is between the opening and closing curly bracket. The final step after we go through the body of the loop is to advance the counter variable. This here, i++, is just shorthand for increasing i by 1. However, we could increase by more than 1, we could decrease, we could do any kind of operation here that we wanted, but i++ is a very common advance. Finally, after we're done with step 4, we go back to step 2, so we're back at the top of the loop, we recheck the condition if it is still true, we go through the body again, step three, then back to step four, advance the counter, back up to the top, step two, and we keep up this cycle until this is no longer true, and then the loop terminates. Let's take a look at both of these again, and let's trace through this program and see what happens in memory and what's output to the console. The first step is creating the variable i and setting it equal to zero, so we put that in memory. Then the second step we're checking is i less than 4, it is. So we go through the body of the loop. We output to the console the value of i, which is 0 right now, so we output 0. Then step 4, go to the advancement, which is incrementing i from 0 to 1. Then back up to step 2, we check is i less than 4, it is. So we go through the body again. We output the value of i, which is 1. So we have that down there. Then the fourth step, we increment i by 1 to 2. Back to step 2, we check is i less than 4. i is less than 4. So we go through the body, print out the value of i, which is 2. So there we have it down there. Get to the end, increment i by 1 to 3. Back up to the top, we check is i less than 4, it is. Go through the body, we output the value of i right down there. Finish going through the body, increment i to 4. Back up to the top, we check is i less than 4. 4 is not less than 4, this is a false statement, so we terminate the loop, and then the program's done. Loops can be useful for solving all types of programming problems. They'll become especially useful when you learn about the array type of list. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button and then leave me a comment down below. To see the next video, click on the image on the left side of the screen. To see the entire playlist for the series, click on the image on the right side of the screen. And to keep up to date on all the latest content, hit the subscribe button in the middle.